Tamaki Makoto, Auckland has a multicultural food scene like nowhere else in New Zealand. In this video, we're hunting down some of the best spots for food from the Pacific Islands. We take you behind the scenes of a Pacific inspired cakery creating mouth watering pineapple pie and coconut buns. Tuck into the traditional Tongan dish of lupulu, hunt down the city's best kekepua'a, Samoan pork buns, and visit a local's favourite for Cook Island food. These are Auckland's tastiest island eats. Hit subscribe and get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. Today we're filming in our hometown of Tamaki Makoto, Auckland and this video is going to revolve around food from the Pacific Islands. People of Pacific descent make up about a third of uh, Auckland's population and there's been a long history of settlement and migration from our Pacific neighbours, places like Samoa, Tonga, Niue, Cook Islands, Fiji and so there is a thriving Pacific Island community in Auckland. This video is going to feature loads of epic food from the Pacific Islands. So we're going to be eating popular snacks, traditional dishes, a load of sweets. It's going to be jam-packed with epic food. We are starting in a suburb called Otahuhu and we are here for Keke Pua'a, which are Samoan pork buns. We've eaten these before, they are delicious. We're just heading up there, let's go. This shop is called Penati's and it is so popular. They have a load of different items. So we've got the keke pua'a, which is the Samoan pork bun, but they also have a load of sweet buns. We've just been talking to Moira, who's one of Moira, who's one of the owners, and the recipe for the keke pua'a is from um, is like three or four generations old. So we've got one in hand. Let's go and eat. Starting off with what looks very simple, this is, and it is, it's just a simple pork bun. So a very common snack in Samoa, the kekepua, and it's a, a pork bun. So I'm going to rip straight in actually and show you. Look at that. Oh, full of nice fatty bits of pork, nice and dark because it's cooked in soy sauce. And you might notice that this looks quite similar to things that you get in the south of China or all over China actually but particularly look down in the Canton region Hong Kong and that's because the Chinese started arriving in Samoa in the 1870s as laborers and so there was influences come through from the arrival of the Chinese into the Samoan dishes and this is a very unique Samoan take on a pork bun which is great it's much more savory than the Chinese version and look at that pork in there Mmm. Oh. Mmm. That is the business. Mmm. That steamed bun on the outside, nice, fluffy, soft. The pork is nice and salty because it's cooked in a lot of soy sauce, so it's got a very savory kick to it. Quite a lot of fat in there, so there's big cubes of fat which are sort of burst in your mouth, so they're quite juicy, those, those fatty bits on the pork. That is one heck of a good snack and a great way to start this video. Just a nice little bite-sized snack. Get us going for a day of eating. We've come down the road and now we're going to get some more substantial meals and these are very traditional Polynesian dishes. Bring it on. We've got the goods, so I've got some lupulu here. Uh, we actually wanted to share with you otaika, which is a raw fish salad, but they were out today. But we've got our lupulu, which is a traditional corned beef and taro leaves dish. It is piping hot, can't wait to get into it. Mm -hmm. 
the restaurant was full up, so we've come to the park to tuck into our lupulu. So I've opened up this steaming parcel of deliciousness. And what it is, is taro leaves, which are wrapped around corned beef, coconut milk, uh, onions, and tomatoes, and it's a baked dish. So I've got me trusty <laughs> travel cutlery here, and I just wanna show you what it looks like inside. It is piping hot. So you can see here, all the taro leaves, which are wrapping themselves. Whoa, there's quite a bit. Look, whoa, they're concealing this beautiful parcel of corned beef, onions, and you can see that coconut milk in there. So I really need some rice or something to accompany it, but it was really hot. I reckon I've got the perfect mouthful here. Corned beef, onion, taro leaves, and it's super juicy. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Oh man, that is really good. The corned beef is very salty, savory. The taro leaves are so tender. They have a little bit of bitterness which cuts through the savouriness of the corned beef. It's very tender. And you've got that sort of creaminess of the coconut milk. Man, this is really good. Mmm. Mmm. Holy moly, that is good. I love corned beef. Corned beef is really popular in the islands. And it reminds me of my childhood because dad used to always have tinned corned beef on toast and it was like a real treat. We used to eat it on the weekends. And this takes me back to, that, to my childhood. It's delicious. I love the taro leaves. They really pack a punch and they're so tender. heading to our next spot for some sweets. So it is a cakery called Sweet and Me and they serve Pacific inspired sweet treats. And we have been allowed into the kitchen before we eat to check out how they make some of these treats. Check out this cabinet of beautiful sweets at Sweet and Me. Now we're just gonna pop into the kitchen and check out what's going on. I can see some coconut buns on the go. Me. So this is Bertrand Jang, the owner of Sweet and Me, and he is going hard at it, scraping the flesh out of the coconut for the coconut buns. So we've just been watching the brioche, the coconut brioche dough being um, rolled out, kneaded, and then separated out into the little balls that will become the coconut buns. And then this fresh coconut is being grated for the sauce that's going to cover those coconut buns. over Bertrand's shoulder as he's pulping up that fresh pineapple. So before we arrived at Sweet and Me, I said to Bertrand, I would really love to see you make your coconut buns, the pani popo or lolo buns, and your pineapple pie. So which is why we've been able to uh, arrive early and watch all the sweet treats being made. So we've watched the co fresh coconut being grated, uh, the dough being kneaded for those coconut buns. Bertrand's just making the pineapple pie filling. So it's made up of a pie base, a pineapple custard, a coconut custard, and he's just working on the pineapple custard at the moment. It smells delicious. Sweet and Me is a Pacific inspired cakery. So a lot of the recipes are Bertrand's take on traditional desserts that can be found across the Pacific Islands. But a lot of the ingredients themselves come from the islands. So the coconuts come from Tonga, as does some of the, some of the vanilla. The cocoa comes from Samoa. Uh, what else, Bertrand? 
Uh, we've got coconut oil coming in from Vanuatu and Fiji. Coconut oil coming from Vanuatu and Fiji. So you can really taste the Pacific in the desserts. Wow. Sweet. It looks so good. So it is finally time to eat. So we've spent a few hours in the kitchen with Bertrand watching him create these desserts. So we have got the gorgeous pineapple pie. How good does this look? So we've got a layer of pineapple custard. We were watching him cook that pineapple, that fresh pineapple into the custard. Then we've got a layer of coconut custard and then there's some coconut cream on the top, some coconut candy and coconut fudge and then just that beautiful tart base. And then check out these. So these are coconut buns. So in Samoa they're called uh, Pani Popo, in Fiji they're called Lolo buns and they are covered in a coconut sauce. These coconut buns are Bertrand's take on the traditional coconut buns which are generally a sweet white roll. This is actually a coconut brioche covered in that coconut cream sauce and they're still hot because they've come fresh out of the oven. I'm gonna attack the time critical uh, dessert first, so the coconut buns. Bertrand said that these are best enjoyed warm, so look at that beautiful doughy brioche and then that stunning coconut cream sauce over the top. Mmm! Mmm! Oh wow! The brioche is light, it's a bit doughy, and the overwhelming flavour is that of the coconut. So Bertrand is using fresh coconut in his desserts and you can taste it, it packs a punch. That coconut cream is silky, it's thick, it's the perfect accompaniment with that brioche. That is sensational. All right, time to get into this pineapple pie. So two types of custard, that's my kind of dessert. Make sure you get a a good mouthful, All right? Mm. Oh, that pineapple flavour packs a punch. What I love about it is it's not overly sweet. You've got that stunning tropical flavour, and then that coconut custard is really smooth and it sort of um, balances out the sweetness of the pineapple. That is sensational. We have made our way over to the suburb of Otara and now it's all about Cook Island food. So this place is the place to come for some Cook Island food. We've never been, we've heard it is incredible. So let's get some. Oh, before we go in, we have to scan the COVID tracing app. We've put in our order for a large market plate. So it comes with steak with mushroom sauce, chopped soy, uh, rice, Cook Island potato salad, and we've also ordered a donut, which we hear are legendary. We are not gonna go hungry. We've got a massive feed here. So this is the market plate and it's stuffed full of goodies. So we've got steak covered in a mushroom sauce. There's some rice there. We've got a famous Cook Island donut, fried bread. Over on this side is sapa suey or chop suey. So glass noodles cooked with soy. There's a bit of beef in there as well. And then this is mayonnaise, which is Cook Island potato salad. It's pink from beetroot. And I can see some peas, carrots, and corn in there as well with the potato. Let's go with the mayonnaise first. So the, the Cook Island potato salad. I love the pink color they've got through there from the beetroot. Oh yes. Mmm. Mmm, creamy from mayonnaise, well cooked potatoes, oh that's good, nice little fresh creamy kick. Mmm, oh the noodles, oh, cooked in a lot of soy sauce, so a lot of saltiness there, but good saltiness, not overpowering. There are glass noodles, so they're very light in the mouth and they take on flavor quite well, glass noodles. So they've taken on that flavor of the soy and you got 
a whole lot of beef through there, so minced beef cooked through there. That's very dark and looks like that's been cooked with the soy as well, so all together. Mmm. Very good. Now, the famous Cook Island donut. Fry bread, basically. So, not a sweetened donut. This is a savoury donut. Mmm. <laughs> oh. Wow. That is good. Oh, so fluffy on the inside. That's crispy on the outside. Super cloudy and fluffy on the inside. I really like the donut. And now some of this um, sliced up steak. Mm. Mm. It's got a mushroom sauce on it. Very subtle mushroom sauce. Not the highlight of the plate, but it's 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 good. For the, that potato salad for me, that's the winner on the plate. And the donut, oh my god, that donut is unreal. I love that we can get so much different food in Auckland. Like today has covered some of this Pacific Island fare, and there's so much high quality stuff we can get. We're so damn lucky here in Auckland with what we get to eat. And this stuff has just been awesome. Some of the you know, more modern or twists on island food with the desserts we've had, the more traditional meals we've had, the snacks we've had, so good. And there's heaps more videos like this coming. So if you've enjoyed the video, check out our playlist, plenty more on there. Hit subscribe and hit that thumbs up button if you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.